Okay, we're on our 2008 server, and today we're going to set up the web server, Internet Information Services. And this will be similar to <coughs> the way we set up Apache in our uh, copy of Linux, Ubuntu, and, and Fedora. But there will be a little bit less scripting involved, and it will be a bit more graphical. This is our included web server with 2008 server. Um, it's more robust than... Uh, Vista and XP have a limited web server, but... Um, it's limited in its capacity to handle requests. It's really just for testing things out, so to speak, in a development environment. On the other hand, 2008 Server has a much more full-featured and robust web server. Its version of Internet Information Services can handle a lot more throughput and bandwidth and simultaneous connections and things of that nature. But again, we want to add a server role, so I'm going to go to Server Manager. And as soon as we're done collecting data down here, Okay, I'm going to go open up roles, and I'm going to say add a role. Add a role, add a sweet role, add a wheat role, add a yeast role. Um, add features required for web server IES. And yes, okay, application programming interfaces, go ahead and add the required features. And then I'm going to walk through the wizard, I want to say next, and next. And notice some of the options here. Active server pages, if you want to do ASP.NET, um, CGI, if you want to configure CGI scripts um, and application development. I kind of like running CGI scripts. And I a little bit like active server pages. But again, I'd have to add interfaces. Let's go ahead and add required interfaces. And add required interfaces. We'll go ahead and add all this wonderful stuff here. Um, server side includes, um, and in this case, you know, these could be banners or SSIs that go in with different pages. and um, Let's go to a couple of other options here. Uh, definitely want the management console, management scripts and tools. Throw those guys in. And let's go ahead and add the FTP server. We'll, um, remember how we, we in Linux, Ubuntu, we added VSFTPD, the FTP daemon? Let's go ahead and do that here. And we'll the FTP server and management console. We'll go ahead and configure that as well. So now when we're done, we should have a working web server with Internet Information Services installed. We can go ahead and add our website, and we'll have an FTP server that will allow clients, we'll hop on our Vista client and create a FTP connection and try to you know send and retrieve some files. Now it's important to kind of remember some, some of the common ports when you're setting up all these services. Remember that for, you know, you may need to configure your firewall or allow um, incoming, outgoing, or, or, you know, through traffic. So remember that for HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, you're going to need port 80, and also port 443 for SSL, Secure Sockets Layer. And that's with the Internet Information Services we're installing. For File Transfer Protocol, FTP, you're going to need ports 20 and 21. Um, for DNS, you would need TCP and UDP ports 53. Um, you know, just some of the, the, the commonly used ports. Telnet, if you're going to configure the Telnet service, you'd need port 23. Um, 3389 um, for lightweight direct access protocol and NetBIOS. And, um, something that you may want to consider when setting things up. The other thing, in addition to the proper ports being open to allow the service to operate properly, you'll need the appropriate permissions. So it'll, this will install a service account, which is sort of like a user account in Active Directory, but a service account is created for the purpose of a program to use it, whereas a user account would have been created for the purpose of a user to log in and do something. That service account, just like a user account, holds access control entries on DACLs for objects, discretionary access control lists. So um, one of the things that we'll need to do when we control permissions, if we set up things like directory browsing or virtual directories or, or shared folders, is configure the NTFS permissions and sometimes the web sharing permissions on those particular objects to control what a, you know, a web browser can and cannot do um, with our web server. Okay, um, we're on Server Manager, looking at roles now, <coughs> and we've finished the IS installation wizard. So let's go ahead and configure Internet Information Services and look at a few of its features. So again, I'm going to go to Administrative Tools, and there are two, uh, you know, new options that I have here. 
IIS Manager I can use to configure Internet Information Services in the default website. Let me go ahead and load that. And then IIS 6.0 I can use to manage the FTP server. So first we'll look at this and we'll look at the default website. Let me go ahead and expand this. Push this over a little bit to the side. And here's our default website. Now I could come over here and right click and I could add new websites. And I could position the sites on different ports. I could, I could have one web server serving out you know, dozens of websites if that need be. And I could just change the port. Or I could assign a different IP address if I had more than one bound to a single NIC. Or if I had multiple NICs. Um, in this case, in a physical path to the website. Um, but we'll go with the default website. And let's just look at some of the settings here. Here are some .NET settings and controls. Um, I can go to basic settings. And I can view virtual directories if I have any virtual directories set up. Um, if I want to go to advanced settings, here are my advanced settings, enable protocols, connection limits. I can browse. Now, I haven't set up a web page yet, so it's just going to have that default IIS 7 web page. But this lets me know that Internet Information Services is functioning or working. And I'm going to close that. Let's go down here and look at some of these settings. Um, my active server page settings. And CGI settings. And one of the really important ones is authentication. Um, remember, I told you that it would add a service account. And in this case, anonymous authentication is enabled by default. So n people don't really have to have a user ID or, or um, password to access the website. At least the material, you know, so we're going to do a wiki website or just an information website. Um, if I were to edit that, um, notice by default it's the iUser account, and that's the account you would use. You have to add that as, you know, you'd have to add that as an access control entry to the DACL for a folder or object to give anonymous web access to a folder. If you want to let people, you know, say browse a folder in directory browsing, or some other such thing, um, we could set that to a different user if we wanted, and then make that an authenticated, you know, force them to authenticate with a password. But in this case, it's it's our user. I use by default. Um, CGI settings default document. Notice that we can choose what the default document is. We can move it up or down. I'm going to move this up. And let me go ahead and move it up and up. And we'll make make our index HTML page the first, you know, our default document chosen by IS as far as what to display. And then it would go in this order. If there wasn't an index HTML. Uh, file in that folder, it would display default HTML, and if there wasn't that, default ASP, and so forth, all the way down. Directory browsing. Now, this feature, normally by default, you will load, you know, index.html, you'll load a default web page. Um, but if you enable directory browsing on a virtual directory or other directory, then you, know, you can see files in that directory even if there is no index.html or HTML page. It's normally not a very secure feature, but sometimes it's what you want to do if you want to, like, say, take files or the contents of what your FTP server is serving out and also make those files available, uh, you know, to people with a web browser over HTTP, then directory browsing may be a useful feature. We will leave it turned off for the default website. Now we can customize our error messages if we want. So 404. And we can, you know, customize what they respond to, what they say. Let's see if there's anything else. Logging, output caching. Again, if we want to log, you know, in this case, here's where our default log files are for people who access our web server. And that can be very useful if some, you know, hanky-panky was going on on your web server or something like that. Okay, so we've taken a look at that. Um, let's go look at the default web directory. Close that, close that. 